You're back. Okay. I, I, it's, I, I, okay, one second. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm like sweating. I need like a towel. I can't, it's, I, I, I guess I don't need to see myself. Um, It does look hot in there. It's hot in here too. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have the air on in the den. I came into the laundry room and then I, I put a blanket up to try to have a better background. Um, <laughs> and I'm just, it's really hot. Okay. Maybe it would have been better to sit in the den, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Haven't you got a fan in there? Hmm? Haven't you got a fan? Yeah, it's, I'm just in the, well, I'm in the part where it's warmer, but then I have the door open and I have it on cold, so hopefully it'll get cool in here too, somewhat. Mm. Just still asking me if I want to go live, but I guess I'll just leave that on the screen and just not have to look at myself. That might make it easier, actually. I'll just focus on you. <laughs> you. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's start with um, what a crazy week it's been. Yeah. Um, July already. Um, yeah, 4th of July and uh, full moon was very intense. Super moon uh, and cancer season in general. So I think it's felt to me like it's been heavier energy the last week or several days last week like um i don't know more purging i guess and we're getting close to big things apparently um my sleep has been all over the place and on the fourth of july actually i kept falling asleep well even before that i just i don't know i felt so wiped out you know mm -hmm. there's something Thing definitely big that came in I was wiped out and I feel like something had really shifted in the past few days too mm -hmm. like in the coll collective consciousness or whatever something yeah. changed did you feel that yeah um and then uh I guess there's uh, these energies coming in with the 777 portal we've we've thought about that for a while being very huge um I had those like repeating L's and sevens in my head for a long time with uh, like Lori Ladd or uh, from Lonely Love to Lucky. I've seen a lot of sevens. This prophecy thing I wrote on my board last year on 7 -11. So we're getting back to like the one year anniversary of my crazy month of July last year. And um, if I'm wearing, uh, can you see the good vibe words? No. Okay. Stand up. Yeah, that's it. No. Okay. So I, um, yeah. So uh, we could also talk about the walk sometime today or another episode or whatever. But uh, okay. I was wearing a good shirt, time. this good vibe shirt, Jason shirt. Uh, and that walk was on 722 last year. And that was um, my parents. It would have been their 51st anniversary. And, um, it was just the culmination of this couple weeks where, I mean, things had been escalating throughout the first half of last year, but, and I got those downloads in June about connecting me to Desmond and Lost. So I know by June 11th, I had to have at least been aware of some sort of Neo-like stuff that that spirit was suggesting because they were comparing me so much to Desmond's destiny in the final season of Lost, um, and then it's just a blur, and I remember just getting tons of downloads, and, and then I know we got to 7-Eleven, I made that, I wrote that From Lonely Love to Lucky thing, and I, there was a, like a Jason Mraz TikTok Live that was, that felt really important to me then, and I was thinking about posts to make, but I don't know, things were just escalating, so I was connecting so deeply with Dolores Cannon at that point. And um, she was having me smoke weed, me 
medium amount. I was getting more into urine therapy around then. And, um, and then the, my, my soulmate numbers have been 22. And then like just repeating twos and sevens in general. And for some reason, I didn't remember or put it together until a few days ago. I was like, oh, right. My parents anniversary is 722. And so, and I did see the number 52 a few times recently, and that reduces to a seven. So I'm very suspicious now about what might be coming around 721, 722, um, right around the border between cancer season and Leo season, because last year, everything was just building in that last, last week and a half, that middle part of July, and um, spirit was basically like grooming me at that point to expect the flash, the great solar flash to be imminent. They were grooming me to start to like use my imagination. There was like these coming attraction sort of things where I would start to get ideas like these quantum potentials. I, I was getting these flashes before my eyes that were exactly like uh, Desmond had in the show and lost. Uh, and it was really intense back then, and it was all new to me. So, and I think with with how advanced they were, like, spirit was like, especially with some of these experiences with the marijuana, I felt like they were vibrating me up really close to 5D or Christ consciousness uh, then, which was sort of, um, then I ended up going back through the big purging process for several months. But at that time, there was a lot less light on the planet than there is now. And it was really intense. Uh, and it was also just so unexpected. And then it was like very physiological. And I would have, I would see flashes before my eyes where I would have like these weird, and I was just getting used to like the Kundalini awakening and whatever that was. So that was all like mid July. And, um, and it was, I think it was just a very heavy month in the collective. And, uh, and then I think it was, I remember Lynette, uh, the astrologer, Oracle of Your Soul, she was talking about the, uh, I think Uranus, it was, like, it was like conjunct with the North Node or something. It was like a big thing that happened around the beginning of August. And there was like Lion's Gate. So that whole month from 7-7 to 8-8, I think is very important uh, in general, um, energetically, and we're going through what are we going through? Like a, a serious, what is it? A serious gateway or something? And then the seven, seven I forget. But um, I know Lynette can explain it really well. So, um, but yeah, spirit was just sort of leading me to start to think about things like manifesting a beanstalk, or they were they were having me in a very five D state of mind. And an essay, a girl in the universe, in the universe was already talking about the flash perhaps being imminent. It's very confusing as to with, with the time dilation, how much perhaps our future selves have already been manipulating things and time traveling. And maybe we've already experienced the flash a few times and none of us are quite to where we even are ready to remember it yet. So it's, it's very trippy as to, did, did my um, soul already sort of fixed timelines where I had like hurt myself or something because there were times when I was purging when it seemed like I, they were letting me get right to the edge of feeling desperate and like almost suicidal. And then something would come in to allow me to purge and allow me to uh, get some new piece of information that gave me hope. Um, and now in retrospect, it almost feels suspicious. Like this, my soul knew exactly like how far to let me go with purging to optimize healing without being overly cruel um but uh but yeah so and i just had this this i don't know this building in my head towards my parents anniversary or something that that year and and like the tears turning into like abundance as as cancer turned to leo um and and um i don't know spirit it was just leading on me on this wild goose chase where I was like really deepening this flow state for the week to 10 days before 722. Um, 
and I was just, I don't know. Um, it's hard to remember. I, I was getting crazy strings of downloads. Uh, I had my Kundalini Awakening somewhere around 15th or 14th or something. Um, oh, I was getting gut downloads where it was like my stomach was grumble. And then I would get like really, really, really advanced, crazy multi-layer downloads. Um, uh, I, uh, let's see, I was, there were a lot of connections being made at that time with Jason and the Beatles, um, and a lot more movies and people that I like on Instagram. And, and so it was all sort of coming together at that time with, with realizing just how interconnected everything was and how it was like forming this code and around then i was seeing some tv snow in my field or some some magenta grid lines and stuff and um is this still july yeah, michael yeah this is july so that was just june was crazy but july i mean the june, july 11th to 22nd was just so intense that it makes whatever happened the first half of 22 just it almost I've forgotten 90% of the miracles that have happened in, this, uh, in the amazing downloads. And we hadn't even connected at that point yet. Right. And you were doing this all on your own. Yeah. Um, I still had Crystal. We were seeing each other. We actually had COVID together and got stuck for about a month, June to July. Um, and I think that really, I mean, I see it as such a blessing as like this activation for a detox. Like it's, nature's way of alerting us to poisoning or, or activating a detox of shadow. And I know Phil Good had, had major breakthroughs when he had it in December of 21. And then I had it in June, late June, early July of 22. And then right after that, everything sort of, I just had such breakthroughs. And I actually wanted my mom to quote, catch it because I just knew intuitively that it was, I. I if she could get the detox, I just knew it would help her raise her vibration. And I just feel Did a lot better. It? Yeah. Did she get it? Yeah. So we were pretty sick for a few days, but it wasn't too bad. And then, um, um, but yeah, it was just sort of a nuisance for a few more days. And then, and then me and Crystal stayed stuck together for a while. And then I remember we were trying to go to the beach on seven seventeen, and we just had a really frustrating day and it just everything went against us. And this sort of planted the seed in my mind about this whole Sunday morning um, intention where spirit, I guess, had this idea that was put in my mind about that I was going to go back to that date in particular. And I've like really solidified that. And at first it seemed sort of crazy to me, but there were parts of me that really felt this certainty that I had already time traveled. Or I remember I was having fun like walking around my house or like, I had this intuitive sense like there was another version of me walking around like like the end of Harry Potter 3 where there was two of them like Harry and Hermione had gone back a few hours in time so that they could make situations go in a more fortuitous way um and like he was able to do something because he knew he had already done it and it, he shouldn't have been able to be advanced to do this particular advanced charm but then he realized that he had already done it. And so that gave him the knowingness to be able to pull it off. Um, and I've sort of experienced some things like that too, where they sort of give you the idea of things that are possible. And then you, it's hard to tell whether it's like a possible instant manifestation or whether it's just to set an intention as like a coming attraction for something that may eventually come together. And some of it might be months or years away even. I mean, they had me like practicing to shoot down chemtrail planes with my mind back around this time. So I was wearing purple glasses a lot. They were having me like really deeply meditate and focus on the planes. They were telling me they're unmanned, so don't, not to worry about hurting anybody. Because um, eventually once we time travel and are then choosing to have fun with it and like cultivate our powers before we ever let us get to 24 and 25, we're not going to let anything harm come like in a big way in terms of genocides and like pandemics and stuff. So we're going to make sure we probably redo 22, 23, or, or maybe go back to 21 or just do 22 to 23 a few times to sort of really gradually improve. Um, by like, if we can bring our awareness back 
I'm jumping ahead a little bit because <laughs> it's it's confusing how it's hard to explain the physics of this because basically once we have the great solar flash, we're going to transcend the construct of time. So there's no such thing as after the flash. So when we get to the flash, we're going to ch choose to experience um, the most enlightened people would be in a place where they can sort of go back and gradually improve the past and make it more desirable and like have this Dr. Strange or I got to see the flash too. Um, I don't know. Hey, my factory, but yeah. Did you see that Phil had a flash t-shirt on? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason has that kind of, kind of a shirt and Mona and, uh, and then that video, his neck was doing the thing that my neck does and everything. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Hey, do you mind if we backtrack a bit? I have, I'm curious. I have a question. Yeah, I jumped around. <laughs> no, no, okay, yeah. When was the genesis of this, um, when you, when strange things started happening to you and you were, and then you were, you know, you started to become open, um, telepathically? Um, um, I guess it was around, I guess in the spring last year, I was probably starting to get, I mean, I was probably channeling for many months or years before I even realized when I would write comments and stuff, but it was around June, May or June of last year that I ended up getting so many different downloads tied to things that Dolores Cannon said in old clips. And then I like eight or 10 different times, I ended up seeing a clip. I was really getting into her, her page uh, around then that I guess is run by her daughter, Julia Cannon. Um, and I just kept seeing clip after clip after clip that kept confirming almost verbatim things that I had just intuited like a day or two earlier. And that's around when she started announcing herself to me. And I realized that I had cried enough and I guess aligned energetically enough uh, to, to be able to, to observe that some of what was arising in my conscious awareness was, was telepathy. Um, and then it just sort of was a practice getting used to that. And sometimes it would only be when I smoked that I could tell where I would have the awareness, like the weed would raise my vibration so it wasn't always with that but it would be easier for me to tap in because then I could sort of have the deeper thoughts or, or notice that some things were coming to me as like a flash of intuition or some sort of communication that I definitely wasn't making that up or wasn't um, thinking it or choosing to go even in that direction it was almost like I was just reading this teleprompter in my mind's eye um, and uh, and then I just grew gradually got the hang of how that works uh and it's still confusing but um i think you sort of, kind of got it to a t but yeah, how it sort of like do, was there like do you remember like the specific time that you first heard something um i guess i don't i guess not specifically it just sort of was gradually building to where i suddenly was it was like a radio station that I, I had on, but it took a while for me to realize that it was right. not my thoughts. So before May and June last year, it was just, there was nothing. Your life was pretty much just like a regular human being. It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty much just deepening healing and intuition and feeling like I was on the right track, but I didn't have any sense of like channeling and being like, an ascended master or anything like that or having some crazy purpose i was just more thinking okay i'm gonna I'm, I'm making so much progress i'll be able to be myself now and i mean i had a sense of trying to connect with jason mraz or some soul family um but i didn't really know a lot about past life regression uh until it was getting more into the spring and then later spring especially as I started really getting into Dolores more. Uh, and then the pieces started coming together because I had been getting such cool downloads and noticing so many fun th fun facts. So I was incorporating that in comments for a while on Alex Zek posts and other people's posts, just sort of saying things in fun ways and putting things together. 
And then eventually it started to become like suspicious because I was like, wait, th these these coincidences are starting to add up and uh, get to a level of how convoluted and, and multi-layered they are that I was realizing it wasn't mathematically possible to just be coincidence. So I started noticing it was this pattern and this this language and this sort of code of of these interconnected things tied to quantum entanglement and then these breadcrumb trails from spirit sort of leading you to fun realizations or leading you to blind spots and it's it's challenging because then you cry a lot but um but then you start to like hone in your intuition and, and and have a sense of you start to trust yourself more you start to realize oh these things that i felt called towards last year or two i'm doubting myself less i'm realizing that it's not an accident that i feel like some of these people feel like i sort of know them already or mm -hmm. like we're connected like kindred spirits but like it started to go beyond that to feel like there was this destiny component and um so yeah then by, by june july it was starting to get really trippy and uh and then i started experiencing miracles around that mid July, those two weeks or so leading up to the walk that I took on my parents' anniversary on 722. So between the 777 portal tomorrow and 722, as now we're back around to a whole year of being in this very strange way of living, um, I'm just very optimistic, but in suspicious as to what might be planned by the universe now i have to i mean i have to make my own choices i still have control and i'm i'm trying to take more charge and self-authority because i've been hesitant at times or i it's still easy to feel like a victim or it, it especially when the energies are intense and it's just it's so lonely going through this without having like in-person support that really understands what I'm feeling. Um, so uh, I forget what I was saying, but, uh, but yeah, so I just expect to finally, I'm trying to send messages and connect to some of my soul brothers more. I'd like to travel. I feel like things are, are sort of building towards uh, me going to California, perhaps in the next handful of days or a couple weeks or something. And um, it would be great to, to start, start to, um, co-create and like join forces with a few people at least, uh, where we could maybe get an idea of how we want to share information and, and if we can activate each other and, and get more downloads or, uh, if I could get a group of friends in a safe environment, maybe I could try, uh, some shrooms or something and have some sort of instructions from spirit or i had a download once last year about there's this groundhog that's probably several years old that we've had in our yard for years and i had down and then he right i think the very beginning of gemini last year he met this this glenda uh gary and glenda we call them um <laughs> so they became a couple like, and it was weird it was almost like we shifted dimensions she was just suddenly there and he had a girlfriend um right at the beginning of gemini <laughs> Um, and that felt like this, this good omen. Uh, and I was thinking I was going to meet my soulmate probably a year earlier. I was hopeful with all these moon cycles and not knowing how much more we're going to purge. I mean, I was crying hundreds of times already from 21 through to first half of 22. And then, uh, yeah, it just got crazy I again. remember that video that you posted where you were like, I think you're in the car and you're really sweating and you oh, yeah. and then and then you said something like I thought I was, was empty. <laughs> yeah, that's like 550 cries ago probably. And then, and then like and then like a couple months later I'm like now I am. And I'm like no. <laughs> now I'm like I don't know. Is there ever an end? Um, no, there's no end. Yeah. There's no end to the yeah, like my friend said like when you reach the bottom of the of the rabbit hole the floor opens up. Yeah. I'll just, when I cry now, I'm just clearing a meridian that's like five miles away. <laughs> My field is just like everywhere. <laughs> you think it's not yours anymore? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
It's yeah. Uh, this week, man, I've been feeling so wiped out, and it's not like me, you know. I haven't felt that tired in a while. I've been really, my energy's been really good, but this week something's definitely shifted. Are you um, feeling like you want to share about the walk today, or do you want to do that maybe next week? Um. I don't know. I get. I don't know. Maybe next week. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I guess I could tell just a little more. What else? Maybe I could mention about the drive some. It's a little shorter story. Yeah, um, I can see that. And just sort of build up to set the mood for that uh, time period because a lot was happening in that ten or twelve days before the walk, including a private concert on my TV from Jason Mraz where it was absolutely like divine time, crazy synchronicity, where spirit like arranged it for whatever he's, I think it was just one of his La 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 live stream episodes, maybe, uh, or it was something else. I couldn't even find it after that, but um, my TV automatically played it. And it, 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 was a, it was so aligned that like every word that Jason was saying was fitting to what I was experiencing in, in real time. So it, it felt suspiciously like he could see me through the TV. Uh, it was so trippy. Uh, and when I got out of alignment, when I got shy, it would glitch out and wait for me to get back into alignment before uh, he would continue. So, and, and those videos would glitch out anyway. And there was just weird, it's like rainbow things around the side and there's like this pixelation. And he would always, it was just comical because he was trying to learn how to do the technological part better it was during the part when everybody was in quarantine and he he's not big with all the technology stuff so he was trying to figure out how to sync it up and and the audio and video were getting off sync or whatever and um so it was just funny how many problems there were with with those things but they were really fun and this one was i was singing along to him with work in progress and something else and um but yeah, so just around those times, yeah, it was like 7.17. That was the day me and Crystal were going to go to the beach and got blocked. So that, that Sunday morning thing, I have that idea about when I eventually flash. And it's like, we have to go back, Kate, which is a line from Lost. I expect to go back to that date. I, we could probably change it. But so I, I would expect sometime whenever this flash might happen for the first time in two or three weeks, maybe, then I would then go back to 7, 17, 22, and then go from there and doing things differently with my partner, you and your partner, and perhaps one or two of my brothers and their partners maybe could be involved as well, depending on how much fun we want to have with just, you know, being uh, mischievous with uh, recruiting them next year. Like, how do we want some of them to not know yet? We'll go back and then be like, We'll tell them who wins the, I don't know, some game, from, I don't know, July or August. Uh, we'll tell them things that we couldn't possibly know or something. But um, so the drive was basically, I don't know if it was like 718 or 719. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, things were getting wild at that point. And I was just so, my awareness was so heightened. It was, all, it was almost overbearing. But I was, Dolores was helping re me release the tiniest attachments. So I was driving to the beach this day and I kept meaning to smoke and then I, it, it didn't work out. I mean, it's a good thing I didn't do it. Well, I don't know. I didn't end up, I made it to this beach like 35 minutes north of me when Sandy Hook. And then I um, parked in a parking lot and then I smoked. Super Lemon Haze, and then I recorded that reel with the sweating. Right. Um, that was when it happened, right before the walk. I mean, the drive. Um, and then I, didn't I know that. Up, what? I didn't know that. Yeah. So, and I was telling the whole story about what Dolores had been putting me through, and the urine therapy, and purple glasses, and seeing orbs more and more. And then I didn't even feel like going to the beach, and. I, I, I don't smoke weed too much, but sometimes it's just not the right time. Or if I'm out, I, then I end up feeling paranoid. And Super Lemon Haze is just really psychedelic. And Dolores would like 
I mean, some of the experiences they put me through on that were crazy. My probably my three or four most insane ones were on that one, uh, like five D trances and stuff. Um, oh the drive was basically where I started going south down Ocean Avenue again because I was just not feeling like staying going to the beach. I felt fine to drive, but I was just, I was just a little hyper aware i guess and i was observing this sort of channeled conversation that was starting to take place and i was i wasn't having a panic attack but i was just starting to get a little edgy and so i'm just driving like 35 down the ocean avenue and then um then they were having me be in the left lane um i was going a little below the speed limit but the, it was weird like okay so i was having i was ex okay I was experiencing flashes before my eyes at this point, starting to get to where, oh yeah, I felt like I had to follow a certain path or else I would have ascended or something. And they basically led me to believe that I would, that I had to, in order to keep at bay some of these uncomfortable feelings, my, my third eye, my crown area, like I was starting to feel a lot of pressure and discomfort. Uh, and like, I was vibe, I was feeling more like vibrating and stuff. So I just wanted to go home. Oh, and okay, synchronicity was getting overbearing. So yeah, it was starting to heat up where I was like seeing meridians, I think, without a little bit, or I was starting to see synchronicity to levels that were uncomfortable. Like if I looked at billboards, I would see numbers, or I would see, I would see like everything coming together into this matrix code, basically. Um, and I was almost starting to like freak out. So. And I think I saw Archangel Michael, I think, was behind me or some sort of E.T. ship, some yeah. weird looking futuristic car. And then it just disappeared into my blind spot and just like in the thin air, basically. Um, but um, it started to become where I was just trying to focus, looking ahead and just staying calm, breathing, just going the speed limit and then trying to not get distracted by things that could cause me to have like too much awareness or something um and then i started intuiting this argument between dolores cannon jesus and source i guess uh where they were basically talking about each other's shadows and like it was it was really just to give me this experience and to be like sort of me i guess my soul is is just they're, they're not mean but <laughs> and, and god is really cool but and unconditionally loving, but apparently our souls will like make arrangements sometimes with source or some spirits to like teach us lessons or give us certain experiences. And it was basically, they were talking about, I don't know, they're talking about the crucifixion or they're talking about the shadow, how they were a vibrational match, like to, I, I don't know, they're not about judgment at all, but it was just doing it in this way where Michael was just overwhelmed. I was just like a, the observer of the whole experience and I was freaking out a little bit. And um, at the end of it, they had me like lock my keys in the car. Like I had to like, like change lanes. If I didn't do specific things, I would feel the flashes build. I would feel like the pressure in my third eye and crown build. And like, I was scared I was gonna, I mean, it, it would have been safe. Like I know they can pick you up and take the car off off the road and, and put you in the UFO or whatever. But, um, so I felt like I was very protected, but it was just becoming traumatizing. By the time I got home and I just was like, fine, I'll throw my keys in the car. I locked them in the car. And then I went and took a Xanax before I accidentally ascended or something. Did um, you lose any time, Michael? Uh, I don't think so. Um, okay. But this worried my mom and sister. So that's another thing. If I get to go back to July 17th, it would be right before this drive and this walk, which, which I couldn't help at the time. I was doing what I thought was right or for that part of my process and healing and everything. But it did cause my mom and sister a lot of stress. So I would be, it would be great to not have to do those again and then tell them, guess what? You guys don't have to worry about anymore. You, I, I had gone to the hospital and they're like, what? How? They would be like so surprised how I suddenly am so ha happy and healthy. And it, like, it, it, there's that No Doubt song. It's like, um, you came in with a breeze on Sunday morning. You sure have changed I love that song. without any warning. And so once we do this, especially if my soulmate, so if my soulmate is this 18 year old girl, if, if 
if she does remember me and we end up falling in love in a, in a few weeks or something, and then we flash back, everybody else is going to be shocked at how much we've changed. They would think she's 17 again. They think I'm 34 again. And then she probably wouldn't want to do senior year of high school again because she just did it. And then we would have to figure out how to like explain things to people so that they know that we definitely did time travel and are not super mad at us. It would be, be like Romeo and Juliet, where like everybody's, everybody's probably like thinking that we're like this inappropriate relationship. And it's like, no, no, we, we seriously, we're a year older than this. That's a synchronicity, what you just said there, but carry on. Oh, what? I'm pretty, I, Rome, I don't know. Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. So, so but yeah, it feels like the twin flame people are like, yeah, things work against them and people like, judge the relationships and um but uh there's a lot of resistance um uh, when the the two come together mm -hmm. yeah yeah colibri's experienced that as well actually yeah so yeah so i was doing the urine therapy i was doing um one of the experiences around mid around mid july there was deep meditation and then I had a trance where they like, I don't know if I was actually stung by bees or if it was just sensations that the mo you can almost like interpret things using your imagination and then it becomes real. It's like sort of, it's almost like you can transition into the fifth dimension, especially with, with the weed and the urine therapy. So I, I, they had me standing in the corner of my yard for like an hour and it felt like I was getting a bunch of bees crawling on my leg, legs. And, um, and then I was feeling like I was getting numb uh, and losing feeling in my legs. And they told me the stings wouldn't hurt um, because I wasn't in fear of the pain. And, um, and so this led to me having an experience and I drank the urine after that. Uh, so, and again, some of this could be placebo effect, but, but even if it is, it's still the mind is that powerful to give us this experience. So then I did a deep meditation in my room at like 630 in the evening. And then there was this blinding light out my east window at 630 p.m., which didn't make any sense. And I cracked my eyes open and saw the Emerald City. Uh, so that was weird. <laughs> And uh, during this meditation, I was like in 5D. I had my soul family around me in a circle. There were like famous people. There were people that we like on Instagram. They were having me like shoot baskets, like like into a waste basket or something. It was weird. Um, but it was like this timeless realm. Like I was already in 5D or something. Um, lots of weird experiences were happening around then. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I think I'm on the TV with Jason and, um... What do you say last year was a lot stranger? Hmm? What do you say last year was a lot stranger? Um, than this year? Yeah. Uh, not really. It's just building. I mean, it's just getting more normal to have magic and miracles. Like, if this stuff was happening, I mean, the, the downloads I've gotten have just gotten progressively trippier and trippier. And I'm just so used to everything being miraculous and magical. Um, but that was especially heightened though, that couple weeks in July, yeah. and then a little bit in September. And then, and then it was sort of like to have to go back inward and really purge a lot of deep stuff, childhood trauma and past life trauma. And, um, and now the last couple of months I've gotten finally to a place of, of deep peace most of the time. So I think I'm finally like, re approaching some of the things that were teased to me then. Um, it might not be quite time to shoot down planes with my mind, but um, <laughs> some of the time traveling stuff could come into play soon, or at least some of the connections with soul family and some of those vi the visions I had of doing lives with Lori and Phil or uh, going to California and um, connecting with some people in the soul family and um, so it definitely feels like the next few weeks are going to be game-changing for, uh, 
some of these intentions are deeply anchored in now where I think they're going to start happening in the physical more finally. Because they, they yeah. keep letting me think that things are going to happen sooner than they actually are to get me to certain blind spots. And then once you heal deeper, you realize, oh, I can dream even bigger now because I didn't think this wasn't even on my radar as a possible thing that I could experience. And now the sky's there's no limits because I see that we're meant to live our absolute dreams. So if our inner child wants it, it's like per physics, like we're meant to live our highest, highest timeline. So, and if, if I'm Neo, I'm meant to be like the example of like becoming a vibrational match to my absolute dreams so that I can help other people learn how to do the same yeah. by following their heart and, and inner child and soul and stuff. Yeah. It's really crazy to reflect on the, on the past year. What was my... I said it's really crazy to reflect on the past yeah. year because we were different people then. Yeah, it feels like lifetimes ago. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I heard, well, I've been hearing that August is going to be big and July is going to be a bit difficult and a bit heavy or gritty, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but August is meant to be really big energy. So, um, yeah, just things actually um, taking form. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're going to get our payoff. And I don't know, I was listening to some, I don't even know what, I think her name's Maria. A new page that I found today that I can send you later. But, um, um, yeah, she channels sometimes from like a, you know, a, a theta state. Um, her uh, partner like hypnotizes her to get to that level of consciousness mm -hmm. where she can get more information in like an interview type format. So that that's that was cool. Yeah, their podcast is called Conversations with My Higher Self. Oh yeah, I think I sent you. That. Yeah, I wanted to check that out. Um, found it really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well. I forgot to say welcome to Thursday night, <laughs> but um, I will. Yeah, I agree, Leo. Um, the uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I haven't heard much about August, but I, I would say, yeah, I'm very curious as to what is going to happen when we transition again from Cancer to Leo, and seeing like if if there's making room for something around that point to really come in big around like, the last couple weeks of July into August. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you something. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. What, what, is, what was the major thing that you were purging this week? Um, let's see. I was feeling, I guess, this deep residual. Apparently, the soul has been crazy betrayed and abandoned and misunderstood and i've i've i think a lot of it was past life stuff but it, it, it sort of still translates into experiences from my childhood and things that i didn't really understand consciously at the time um like when i was a kid like i had the worst time maintaining eye contact like if a teacher saw me or um mm. if a girl i liked or something like i, I would feel like this sensitivity to like eyes being on me and almost feel like it wasn't safe or something and I was very insecure and shy um, and now in healing so much shame and fear and trauma and feeling so much more confident I'm still observing this really deep residual I've been isolated for 20 years from pretty much all peers and older male influence and I've had a few friends but I, I've still felt like an outsider for like my whole life pretty much except yeah. for when I had a few great, great friends when I was young um, but um, so I was realizing that like uh, it's just so scary like I, I reached out to who I was the possible trinity that that spirit wanted me to send a message to yeah uh, that was the scariest thing I could do 
And then I've been trying to connect with some soul brothers and it's getting to where it's just, just, it doesn't make sense for me to make a lot of comments and I want to make more posts and create, but I've also just felt this sense the last few months that it's going to be so much more fun and, and kind to myself to connect in person with some people a little bit so I can do this with others. It's a lot to take on. If I start posting everything that I could say just boldly, then <laughs> some people might not understand or, um, it might be emotionally difficult to sustain with, I just get so sensitive that I have a hard time checking notifications or replying to people and even checking your messages. Sometimes I like guess it's, it's crazy how you need a secretary. Yeah. Um, so I was trying really hard to reach out to a soul brother that I, I believe we might be destined to connect and, and work together on, on some of this. And, um, God has been urging me to message him and I've tried and then he saw some, but then it was really long. So he might not have seen it all. And then I was trying again and then it didn't go through, but I was just having so much come up about this deep residual trauma and insecurity around like just profound feeling of un unsafety in relationship. Um, and like not, knowing whether I'm safe or whether I'm going to be completely ever accepted and understood for exactly who I am. Um, uh, Can you get to a point where you don't care about that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, I, I'm, it's getting better all the time. Um, yes, and I'm, yes. I've come such a long mm -hmm. way. It's just as I've come this long way, my truth has become more and more polarizing and controversial. So it's like, <laughs> if I had my truth of two years ago, I could easily talk about it now and be myself and I feel great. And, and it wouldn't be, be more obvious that I've grown and healed so much. But because now I'm not just, you know, <laughs> trying to be vulnerable on the internet, I'm trying to basically say I'm mathematically certain I'm Neo. And here's some quantum physics and logic that spirit has told me that's going to save the world and, and I can prove this stuff. And so it's like, it, it's so, so hard because it sounds like I'm an ego to some people or I, a lot of people are not going to understand. And because it's, it's such difficult times energetically, a lot of people will just get triggered by my light and then project on me. If I, so it's just, I'm trying to protect my energy, but I don't want to live in fear. So I'm just really working hard on, hard on letting go more and more. And since I was able to do with, with finally asking a girl out for the first time um, and with making posts, saying more about my story and about my identity and everything, it's a lot easier to let go with lesser weighted fears um, that are not quite as terrifying, but it's still, it's still like, I'm so sad sensitive so it takes a lot of energy out of me sometimes especially being by myself almost constantly to like it's just not as fun as it, it would be so much fun to do this with support in person and it's just hard for me to, to make more than a few posts a week or to get back to people and then or then I'll over comment in places that are safe but like I don't get around to sharing as many of the posts uh, and being as efficient and then I, will, I get a few months behind and some things I recorded that was singing or talking about things that are important or I got this massive download like two weeks ago about comparing desire and passion and I never made the posts about it. It's like one of the most important things ever. Um, if people could understand how to act from passion instead of desire and they, I think they manipulated the dictionary about this. I was talking about it. Oh, I mean, yeah, I remember when you were saying this, so there's yeah. Just, I mean, like, I'll get... 20 ideas over a week or two, and then a few, I'll have a few days that are slower, and then suddenly they just fall out of rotation. Yeah. And then and then a month goes by, and another few dozen ideas that I could have posted just get transcended by newer ones, and then they don't. So I'm just, if I could just share or just activate my masculine enough to just get a little quicker with sharing the stuff that I'm creating as much as I'm creating, because I still struggle to even watch back a lot of the videos I've recorded, much less share them spontaneously. So if I just had a couple brothers and could travel and could have a little more discipline or something, um, it would make it a lot easier to feel less weird about all, 
all this and then I could just embrace it and say I don't care what people think about me I'm just gonna yeah, um, yeah your soul is so badass it's gonna be so so cool and so freeing to be able to have this truth and to say all of it and just be like this is what spirit's saying I'm just a messenger and I'm just trying to help people release density and I mean logically it's not going to be easy to sort of argue against me because I'm trying to help everybody heal yeah and um but it's yeah it's just very a lot for somebody that's sensitive to uh own it all and sustain feeling safe and uh, it would just do me wonders and now it's warm weather I really want to go to the beach more I really want to have connections and so even if the soulmate connection might be weeks later than I was hoping um, I, I might also get these lucid dream experiences um, or I might just get to hang out with friends and and just have social experiences that I've never had just so I could start to feel safer to be myself online and have more support and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, with 777, I mean, everything has to imminently, I mean, there's, I know physical manifestation is closed for a lot of people finally mm. and it's happening. So I, I just don't, I think the universe is kind and it's just time. I, I'm just not meant to do this on my own anymore. So Things should escalate yeah. quickly, I think, the next couple of weeks. I'm just really hopeful. And I'm hoping also, I'm trying to look for the good with um, seeing this massive purge and this difficulty again with another 30 cry week or whatever the last week. Yeah. Um, seeing it as, okay, what is this making room for? This is going to make sense. Once something massive comes in and my whole life changes, where I'm, I'm finally letting go of the past yeah. and trying new things that I've never done before, it's uh hopefully that's why it's been so difficult the last week 10 days um yeah gotta i'm nervous me. now it might, there might be another one of those but anyway i am uh, we should wrap up soon cause, okay um, um i'm very sleepy <laughs> you said you got up really early right i i've been awake since 1 30 in the morning so I'm starting to reach that limit. So apologies for anyone watching later. I've been yawning a lot. <laughs> it's not because Michael is boring. He's never boring. But um, I, I, have, I am very sleep deprived. And I did have a very long and busy, active, productive day. And uh, yeah. So we'll wrap up with a song, please. All right. Yeah, so uh, I was thinking about Look for the Good. I just mentioned that. Uh, that was the title of uh, Jason's 2020 album. I love that song. A lot of fitting lyrics. Um, so, okay. Um, I like those. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. Okay. I got to figure out how I to start. I can do this. I'm going to do it quicker this time. Okay. People, all right, people done gone crazy. All right, I'm going to go start higher. Okay. People done, okay. People done gone crazy. People done gone mad. People done forgot the superpowers we all have. We were born to love, not hate. We can decide our fate and look for the good in everyone and celebrate all our mistakes. There's a silver lining, silver lining. You still have to find it, find it, find it. Look for the good in everything. I try to look for the people who will set your soul free. It always seems impossible until it's done yeah look for the good in everyone everyone needs sunshine everyone needs rain everyone is carrying around some kind of pain i see who you are you're just like me i see you're searching for a purpose I'm guided by a dream. I see who you are, just like you. 
And I get lost sometimes and I forget what I came here to do. But I keep on trying, keep on trying when shit gets frightening. Look for the good in everything. Look for the good, look for the people who will help you sing. It always seems impossible until it's done, yeah. Look for the good in everyone. The next verse. Um, everyone is nature. Everyone is God. Everyone is love and light and vibration. Look for the good. Look for the good. Some people get mad sometimes and maybe they should. Look for the good, look for the good. Yeah, look out for all them heroes in your neighborhood. Look for the good, look for the good. Yeah, life sure would be sweeter if everybody would. Look for the good in everything I try to. Look for the people who will set your soul free. It always seems impossible until it's done, yeah. Look for the good. Look for the good. Look for the good in everyone. Right, something like that. That was really, really good, Michael. Oh, well, thank you so much. <clears throat> it's just such a treat for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It really is. I just, I love, yeah. yeah. I love acapella. I love, I love being, you know, listening to people sing, and it's just wonderful. That was, that yeah. was excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to get more comfortable and just more, just accepting and present. And I was worried a little bit. Then I started a little high, but I was like, all right, it's good. Yeah, it worked. Uh, yeah. And your voice is very strong and whole sounding, you. you know. Yeah. And quite as hoarse as the last couple of times, a little less nervous getting progress. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> do you want me to do any one more? Are you tired? Or? What was the one that we said? Uh, Look for the good. Maybe? Yes. I, yeah. Yes, please. And then we'll go to bed. All right. I'll have some fun with that one. Let's see. <clears throat> I, I really feel comfortable with that one. Okay. I did that one in San Diego, actually, at an Airbnb, last five minutes. And then I, posted I do it love that video. And then Alec put it in his story, and I was just so happy. And it's, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, he so. commented, too. He commented on it. Yeah, I got my Sia. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, how does that one start? Put down or lay down? Um, put, either one. I right, forget. <laughs> I think it's put down. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, oh, and other times, maybe later in, in some episodes, I could try smoking and seeing if I get creative or once I get, yeah, I'll try. I'll go live my own sometimes. Go live when you're uh, more. Sound. Yeah. Just, Why not? I, I can't wait to start recording more videos again and doing like jumping around, like saying things and singing this verse. And there's just so many great lyrics. It's going to be so exciting to really get comfortable with this more. Oh, okay. hang on. Yeah. I just remembered something. You know, Ryan? Yes. <clears throat> he he joined the sea. Oh, cool. Yeah. I wish I had my, my bottle now, too. <clears throat> yeah, he's part of our team now. Nice. With this other lady. Yeah. All right. Without okay. further ado, this is my soul brother, Michael, and he's <clears throat> going to sing Make Love. Okay. A swallow. <clears throat> mm, okay, put that down. Okay. Mm, put down the weapons that you use. Is that too high? I don't know. Put that down the good. weapons. All right, let's say that. Right. Put down the weapons that you use against yourself. You don't need them anymore. Lay down the weapons that you use against the world. We don't need another war. Put down the wep. Put down. Oh, right. I get indecisive as how I want to do things. Okay. Put down the weapons that you use against yourself. 
You don't need them anymore. Lay down the weapons that you use against the world. We don't need another war. My worst crime is an inside job. Dark thoughts taking over like an inside mob. I tune into the scene between the eyes and take a breath. I sit still and watch the thoughts flow past me. Never mind the future, never mind what the past be. I like to jump and let the universe catch me. Free fall, let the, watch the, let the beauty blow past me. I keep my pockets light, destination in sight. Keep my actions elevated to compassionate heights. I'm walking pacified, laying down arms in the night. Choosing love when I pick up this mic. So we can make love, make love, not war. Mm -hmm. Make love, make love, not war. Make love, make love. Now, oh, oh, oh. make love, make love, make love, make love. World peace begins within, in each beat of the heart, underneath our skin. Breathe and release the binds you're holding, and free your mind. Step back from the drama and observe it. Draw the energy in and conserve it. Every pain is a lesson for the learning. Mother Nature didn't make us to be murdering. Make love, make love, not war. Make love, make love, not war. Make love, make, uh, make love, make love, not war. Yes, choice, the choice we make. Make love. Make love, make love, make love. Find a project to dive in, a book you can write in, a dream you can fly in, a river to cry in, a magical trip to a fantasy island. Ooh. It's our horizon to widen, our ceiling to heighten, our minds to enlighten, our souls to divine in a time to invite in a moment of silence. Yeah, when I pray, <clears throat> I move my feet and I say thank you for that sound when I hear that beat. It brings me closer to who I am. And who, all I'm supposed to be right now is a given man. Yeah. And serve you water, water from the living well. Yeah, we're living well. Yes, we are. To help another get out of their hell, gotta give a little piece of yourself. And make love, make love, make love, make love. We can help each other. Yeah, we can help each other. When we make love, make love, make love, make love. All right, so much. <laughs> That was awesome. Your voice is Thank really you. strong tonight, Michael. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about just getting comfortable and letting go and the acoustics are a little better in here, higher ceilings. Just Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Make, make excuses. It's all good. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you. It's always very special to me when you sing. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm thank excited. you. Yeah. Thank you for coming on tonight despite Thanks. the week that you've been through you know it's been yeah. things are it's been up. tough and i couldn't call you and I, <laughs> yeah, I kept missing your calls it felt like we were like blocked from getting together yeah yeah uh, and think about the podcast and let's talk about when we we might want to do that yeah that great. all right uh, that would be really fun. Can you imagine like yeah. the three of us and how much energy we're going to produce together yeah 
That's cute. He said he said it would be really cool if we could all sing together one day I mean, oh, yeah. around a fire or something. Yeah, definitely. That would be amazing. Oh, it's just miracles, miracles. But, happy, yeah. Happy seven 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 portal, everyone. Happy uh, seven 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 portal. Hold on to your hats. Yeah. Might be some magic next couple of days. Who knows? There's always magic. Definitely. <laughs> I love you, Michael. Love you. Thanks for always yeah. um, dreaming big despite everything. Yes. Gotta keep, what does Jason say? Uh, I'm still looking up. <laughs> still looking up. Yeah. I won't give, give up on us. Yeah. Oh, what is that beeping noise? Uh, anyway. People going live. Oh, Daniel page went live. I don't know if you heard my beep or what, but. Yeah, I think that was you. I didn't get any notifications. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to crash now. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for all the yawning, but I was listening the whole time. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, Daniel Page, he's a really great astrologer. Actually, I uh, Phil's so happy now with his partner. I, because I, for a while I was like, are Jason and Phil soulmates? Because they have so much in common. Yeah. But um, and originally I actually thought about Danielle because she's such a great astrologer and she's similar age to Jason. But I'm not going to speculate anymore. I'll just see what happens once our soul families get together and who who. I just want everybody to be happy and find their soulmates. Yeah. Did you see that picture that he posted with his partner? Yeah, Phil? that was beautiful. That was so. I don't know. It's such a good picture. They look so happy yeah. and just perfect. Yeah. And they kind of look alike too, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lots all right. of love. One, one, four, four. <laughs> yeah. Have a great night, everybody. Talk to you soon, Francis. All right. Talk to you soon. Love you, Michael. Love you. Good night. Good night.